2020 end of year review, I cannot tell you how glad <laughs> I am that this is almost over. What a bloody awful year. So I think rather than just looking at 2020, we'll look to what's coming in 2021. It's probably slightly more kind of upbeat. Anyway, as you can see, we are not on Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose sold back in September, so we are boatless. But after seven years of touring on that boat, we have a lot to look forward to. So Therese, 2020, what has it meant for you? Well, 2020 has been, yeah, like the year to forget, I think. But also um, for us, I think that we were very lucky and that we at least uh, were able to have like patches of normality within the year. So back in March, um, obviously the world spun off its axis and I was in Australia and Nick was in London. I got on literally one of the last flights out of Australia before they closed the international borders. Had I not gotten on that flight, I may still be in Australia. So very, very glad that we were uh, reunited and we then spent 10 weeks in lockdown in London, which was delightful. And we finally escaped across the border to France, because as you may recall, they closed all the borders in Europe. So we finally got back to France, um, declaring that our boat was our home and that we literally had no other home to go to, which was very much the truth. So we ended up uh, back on board Ruby Rose, uh, in May, the end of May, only a few months later than we had originally planned. And much, I think, our surprise, we actually ended up with like an amazing summer. We sailed Ruby Rose throughout Brittany, um, North Brittany and South Brittany. And we're obviously, we're about midway through that series right now. So you guys have been watching those episodes. The feedback we've had on those episodes has been fantastic. Thank you so much for all of your lovely comments, by the way. Um, it's really great to see you guys enjoying, you know, watching um, us sail around a cruising ground that some of you are very familiar with um, and some of you have literally never heard of before. So it's been, I, I honestly think 2020 in terms of our sailing season has, and this might sound kind of weird, but I think it was one of our best sailing seasons ever. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, pandemic notwithstanding. Yeah, I think from our point of view, um, a couple of things. One, I think we were pretty lucky to get onto the boat. And so I think we did, we were aware, okay, we're gonna get a sailing season. We were unsure as to whether we'd even get sailing back in 2020. And Therese isn't exaggerating. She almost didn't get on that plane. And it was literally a series of fortunate events where she tried to change her flight to come back later and I think Emirates didn't call you back. Yeah, yeah that's right exactly so on the like 17th or 16th of March obviously when things were really ramping up and every single minute you know there was like you know some kind of crazy update um, I decided that the best thing to do would be for us to kind of stay put um, so I would stay in Australia and Nick would, Nick was back in the UK by that point and he would stay in the UK and that we would just kind of wait for a little bit, you know, back in March we were like, this should all be over in four weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, it's probably best that we just wait for like things to calm down a little bit and then I'll fly back and then we can carry on with our lives. Little did we know. Um, but Emirates were not responding to anyone's phone calls. I couldn't get a hold of them um, to change my flight. I like literally was on hold for literally days um, and I never got a hold of them. And in the end, I it was too late for me to change my flight without forfeiting the entire fare. Um, and so I thought to myself, well, I'll just have to forfeit the fare because I don't think that it's really safe to go back um, to Europe at the moment. And I woke up um, at thinking, well, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck at my parents' house the, at least the next four weeks. And um, that was the day of my flight. And I looked at the news and the, um, all of the borders were closing down. And I just had this premonition that if I didn't get on that plane, then I wouldn't be getting on a plane for a very long time. So anyway, that was that. I got on the flight and, and it was just, yeah, very lucky. Like, thank God Emirates customer yeah. service was so bad at that time. <laughs> so thank you Emirates for having appalling customer service. We really value it. Um, so yeah, as Teresa said, for 
you know, that's the first thing. We were pretty lucky to get a season, so that really made, you know, we looked at the things with a new set of eyes. The second thing, which I think is, is really uh, important not to underestimate, is the amount uh, of nautical miles we had to cover, cover last year or in, in our season. Yeah. Normally in a season we would cover a couple of thousand nautical miles. I mean our biggest season we've done 5,000 nautical miles, you know Atlantic crossings and then you know zipping all around. So from that point of view only having to do, I think we had only about 500 miles to do as the crow flies. We took a fairly convoluted route so it worked out more. But having a season which basically meant we, can, we could sit and stop in a, an anchorage for a period of time, explore little areas, really made, that to me really made our season. And I say this a lot in live feeds, I say this a lot in interviews. Um, when we started cruising, the mistake that we made, that we were told that we would make, but still wandered blindly into, was slow down really slow down. Our first season, I think we must have covered, we probably covered 5,000 miles. Our second one, about 2,000 miles. Our third one, we came back across the Atlantic, so it was another big one. But just being able to do a, a small, compact distance of seasons really made it for us. And honestly, as we go into 2021 and Ruby Rose 2, we need to cover some fairly big you know, distances, but those kind of compact uh, radius seasons are probably for me going to be an absolute you know a real highlight to our sailing for sure and and it was the actual um cruising ground as well because i mean south, south Brittany and north Brittany, but the weather is a little bit better in south Brittany, are just the most charming delightful places the, they're challenging you know the navigation is really challenging um and we we speak about this in in our um, episodes as well we definitely got caught out like two major times that I can think of. One of them has been um, on the episode that I'll link to up here, wherever um, that is, uh, where we got caught in Morbian, miscalculated our tides and it all kind of <laughs> went pear-shaped. And the other time we got caught out, that's an episode um, that's yet to come and that's when we'll trying to cross the English Channel, but I'll, we'll, that will be coming up in a future episode. So um, yeah, it was definitely challenging. We, we yep. kind of got caught out a few times, but it was, Despite that, and despite obviously the pandemic, um, we had an amazing season and I hope you guys are enjoying this series. As I said, I'll just clarify because sometimes I know that it, it can be a little bit confusing, you guys working out like what's happening and where we are and what's going on. A lot of you are like, but I thought you were getting onto a catamaran and you're releasing videos of your like, you know, sailing on a, on a monohull still. Um, the French sailing series will continue to run until about March. So you continue to get these episodes until about March and then, you know, the next season will start um, around that time after that. Yeah. So just to clarify. Yeah, and we, as I said, we, get a, we do get a lot of questions like, why are you not filming real time? It's almost impossible. The amount of editing that we have to do in a regular season means that if you want us to produce good quality episodes, we need to be able to kind of sit tight and edit. We're not, we're not run and gunning, you know, and just spending a couple of hours editing. So. In a normal season, we tend to try and put a buffer in to give us time to edit. 2020, and honestly planning for 21, we weren't sure you know, when Ruby Rose 2 was gonna be available. So we did make the extra effort to kind of make more episodes, uh, make them kind of like within a time frame, and thus we could release them. So there was some planning to obviously keep bringing content to you. So yeah, that was one question that we wanted to kind of answer. The other question is, um, about our fake drama on your channel, you, you know, <laughs> which, uh, you know, honestly, we have sailed uh, the waters of southern and northern Brittany. I think this is our third, our third foray there. It is some of the finest cruising grounds, you know, we've ever been to. They are, they're amazing. The issues are that tidal flows there and tidal heights are insane. You are looking, um, in one of the future videos that's coming out at a nine knot tidal race. Um, and every six hours, that's a, that, you know, that comes back and forth up to nine knots, I think actually sometimes more. So where you are facing nine knots of current, you, are, you really have to get your tides absolutely bang on. The other thing to, to appreciate is that, that yes, there are areas that are really high tides and really kind of like strong currents all around the world. Uh, we sailed out of North Kent 
and in North Kent, there are some fierce tidal races. I've never seen a, t a nine knot one, but if you're going up the Thames estuary um, to get into London, you can pick up a fairly you know, crazy tide. The big difference between North Brittany, South Brittany, and then the rest of the world is that everything, the entire, you know, all the geography, all the geology is all granite. So if you hit something, or if you get swept onto something, you're not getting swept onto mud or a nice mud bank or a sandy beach. You are getting swept onto some pretty badass rocks. Um, so it is, it is pretty challenging navigation. So uh, the episode we put out in the More Beyond, where I think we had, you know, a five knot current pushing us, you know, sideways. We didn't get the boat backwards with it. We just about got it, you know, standing still. If we'd lost the engine there, we would have been swept out and we probably, you know, could have, it would have been far more difficult for us to avoid damaging the boat just because of the, the, the rocks. So yeah, it, it was more challenging. It was genuinely stressful. Oh, for sure. I mean, we, you know, we did get, we did get stressed. And I think that, um, you know, this is why the French are such brilliant sailors because they have this really challenging cruising ground. And some comments from you guys have said, look, we did our, you know, we went to the Morbihan to do like a course of some, like a sailing course of some description, or, you know, we've done a few cruises around North and South Brittany, you know, but I'm nervous about crossing the Bay of Biscay next year or whatever. Like, trust me, if you've sailed around, well, the UK coast as well, to be fair, the English coast as well, but the North and South Brittany coast, then you'll be fine literally anywhere in the world. <laughs> anyway, divergence aside. Yep. So 2021, let's, yes. let's just throw 2020 into the fire. Um, 2021, obviously, once I kind of get out of my elf costume for Christmas, <laughs> we are going to be looking to what we're, what the plans are. Now, let's just do this in chronological order. As you know, Ruby Rose 2 is going to be coming in at the end of 2021. So what do we have planned for you? Well, 2021, we are going to do what uh, we've always said we wanted to do, and that is a tour of Australia and a sailing tour of Australia. So initially, what we're going to do is combine both facets of what we want. We want to sail in Australia, but also we want to learn to sail catamarans. So we are going to learn how to sail a catamaran and kind of refine our knowledge base from the transition from monohull to catamaran in Australia. So yes, Therese, do you want to fill the fantastic people in as to exactly what we're going to be doing? Yes, absolutely. So we have a flight booked uh, for Australia mid-January. Very much hoping we get on that flight. Um, fingers crossed that that does happen. And then uh, we are going to be doing two different um, sailing adventures within Australia. So the first is going to be in New South Wales. We're going to be sailing out of Sydney. We're really excited about that. So we're going to be on board a, I believe, a Sea Wind 1260. And um, we're super excited to first learn how to sail a catamaran be spend some time on a 1260 because we love the 1260 we saw it in annapolis last year we went for a test sail and we just thought what an amazing catamaran wasn't quite right for our plans but is you know on its own a fantastic craft so we're really excited to spend some time on board 1260 and to sail her really push her see what she can do and then we are going to go up to the Whitsundays. So a lot of you may have heard of the Whitsundays. Um, obviously anyone in Australia has heard of the Whitsundays, but perhaps um, those of you who come from further afield have also heard of the Whitsundays. It's near the Great Barrier Reef, and it's one of Australia's kind of finest cruising grounds. It's up in the tropics, up north, and full of beautiful islands, like white sand beaches, palm trees, like kangaroos on the beach. It's just beautiful, and I'm so excited to go up there. Never been up there before. Um, never been to, uh, well, north of Brisbane before. So really excited. Um, so we're gonna spend a couple of weeks on board another sea wind, I think to be determined exactly yeah. which one um, that will be. But uh, yeah, super excited about that. And we've got a few other kind of little, yeah. you know, plans, um, you know, thoughts about other kind of um, water slash boat related um, adventures that we're gonna have, but that's still firming up. So we won't go into that just yet. But in essence, we're going to be doing, um, yeah, a full series of our sailing adventures um, in Australia. Um, so comment down below, by the way, if you have any suggestions regarding exact kind of, uh, you know, anchorages to visit or whatever, like places that we have to go to um, while we're on um, our boat in Australia. So, yeah, let us know. Yeah, so 
lots of sailing in Australia. We're gonna we're gonna see some other boats. I think we've got, as I said, as Therese said, we've got some other things lined up. Um, so we're really looking forward to to kind of doing some sailing there. But in addition to that, Australia is such an amazing and beautiful country. And what I have said to so, to Therese a lot is, I think Australians just take the natural beauty of Australia for granted. You have such an amazing back garden mm -hmm. that I look at it as a tourist and think this country is stunning. So we really do hope to showcase Australia as a travel destination. I mean, we're not endorsed by a tourist board or anything like that. But I think to kind of video parts of Australia that, that not a lot of people just won't see uh, or haven't visited and kind of show them through our eyes. So we're going to be doing a little bit of overlanding. We are going to kind of go and see the, the great, you know, the great natural beauty of Australia. Take in some pie shops probably as well <laughs> some, and some, some local bakeries because Australia is famous for weird little bakeries and other kind of strange like little quirky things that I absolutely adore about Australia. So that will all be coming up. Um, and honestly, the other thing, we are definitely going to do some meetups. We have been promising our Australian audience meetups for years. Yes. Now, so to be confirmed, but because we're going to be in Sydney, because we're going to be in Melbourne, because we're going to be in Adelaide, we are going to do a kind of East Coast set of meetups. Obviously, socially distanced and responsible meetups, um, if that is what is required at the time. Um, so yeah, we hope to catch up with a lot of you fantastic Australians and sink a couple of frothies with you. Yeah, by the way, just um, if you want, if you, that sounds like something you'd be wanting to get involved in, then you'll have to follow our social media pages because that's where we kind of publish all those types of updates and that's where we'll be talking about um, and organising the meetups. So yeah, the links will, will be down in the description below for that. So that takes up part Q's one and two, so probably up to summer. Now, what have we got planned for you after that? Well, Annapolis, the Annapolis Boat Show. For those of you who have continued to ask, yes, we are going to be at Annapolis as long as we can get there and the restrictions are lifted. So we have so much we're gonna do at Annapolis. So again, it will be patron meetups at Annapolis. I want to start looking at a couple of boats to review. I think there are some, there's a lot of things on the market that we've been asked to review. And while obviously it does not kind of like fall into the, into the narrative that we were, we were dealing with a year ago when we were looking for a catamaran, now that we have our new boat, we're not looking with the, through the eyes of prospective purchasers, but there's some things on the market. We've already been asked if we want to review the new Exquisite. Yes, of course we want to review the new Exquisite. There are some new boats on the market. People want us, we get so many requests to review the Barley. Um, and we've always said we're not gonna review the Barley because it's not for us a liverboard. But I think that in this huge repository of Catalan reviews that we've done, to add a few more into that will be pretty useful. I also think that you know it, it, it's useful for you we get literally thousands of messages and emails on a yearly basis saying can you please review this and thank you so much for the reviews they're pretty objective so that's what we're gonna be doing at Annapolis reviewing some boats um, if you have requests for the boats you want us to review just put them down below and I'm not going to keep this exclusively to catamarans. It, we may, if there are if there are monoholes that I really have an interest in as a liverboard, I probably would take a look at them. Off camera, we go and look at them anyway. It's not like we're like, oh, we're only going to look at these. So, you know, we looked at uh, the last Annapolis. We looked at the Amel. That was a pretty interesting boat, the Amel 50. Um, I'd live on that if we had the money. Yeah. You well. know, and so Amel, the big kind of blue water cruisers, um, Nyad, again, amazing boats, um, Oyster Discovery, all these kind of blue water things that are out of our price range. And even some of the more production monoholes where, you know, you think, well, that would probably work as a liverboard. And we know lots and lots of people that have used kind of Benetos and Genos and, and Bavarias and lived aboard perfectly comfortably. So I think we may take a look at some of those uh, over the coming 12 months and then in future boat shows. So that takes us to Q3. Then, <laughs> Therese, what's after that? Well, then we are going to Vietnam. So we will basically be like flying pretty much from Annapolis to Vietnam to um, kind of observe the final stages of the build of Ruby Rose 2. And we will hopefully be launching her like around that time. So uh, we're not exactly sure kind of month or date, but it's kind of going to be the end of 2021. And where, I mean, last night we had like a, um, 
a presentation, like an online presentation um, from the guys at Seawind, um, Shane and Mike. And it was just an update um, with some more information about the 1370. And I mean, it really, not that we weren't already kind of 10 out of 10 excitement levels, but it just really gets us so, so excited um, when we kind of get these little updates coming through about the 1370. Uh, so yeah, we're really, really excited about that. So the end of the year obviously will be full of um, you know, uh, Ruby Rose 2 news and content. So that's going to be amazing. Yeah, so um, regarding what happened, la you know, the, 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 the teleconference last night, firstly, I accidentally unsubscribed from the notifications from Seawind. <laughs> so I, it was actually one of our patrons that let me know, are you watching this teleconference? I'm like, what teleconference? Um, so I had to go and eat humble pie with the, 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 uh, the girls at Seawind who had kind of like, yeah, you unsubscribed. Um, <laughs> But I suppose it's like a child at Christmas trying to not think about Christmas because it gets you too excited. I'd kind of put the whole Ruby Rose 2 thing to the back of my mind because it seems like such a long way away. However, this, the, you know, this teleconference went on for two hours last night and all I can say is the boys over there are putting a crazy, crazy amount of work into this boat. They have thought of like a hundred different details that I wouldn't have thought about in a hundred years. So just looking at their new renders, looking at the schematics, looking at the new options for the boat, it is incredible. And yeah, I kind of went to bed last night thinking, oh my God, this boat is gonna be absolutely superb. So, you know, a couple of things um, just to bring you all into, into the loop. Hole number one, starting build in January, so yeah. next month. So like a few weeks away. Yeah, so the, so by the time you see this video, hole number one will be going to mold. And I'm like, oh my God, that means you can actually see a physical, a physical representation of this boat, a manifestation of, of hole number one. Hole number two is our boat. Um, for a lot of you that have asked, why do we not get hole number one? Yes, we were offered hole number one. Um, the reason we chose not to is that I wanted to actually see the physical boat and it's nothing. And the reasons for that uh, are more to do with us being creators than actually being sailors. We are gonna install cameras on the boat. We are gonna have a lot of things put into this boat which actually are custom options for us um, so that we can store our camera equipment. We can have cameras mounted in certain places and until I can get onto the boat and actually look at placement, um, I can't commit to it. And being able to do this remotely at the moment is pretty difficult. So um, once we've seen hole number one and we've taken a walkthrough, maybe it's a video walkthrough because we won't be able to get to Vietnam, we can get the guys at Seawin to put cameras in certain places and, and kind of mark them out. So yeah, hole number one is gonna start build probably by the, just shortly after we release this video. So that is crazy, crazy exciting. And there is just so much going into Ruby Rose 2. So we obviously we're going to Vietnam, we're gonna be filming this and we'll be bringing you lots of Ruby Rose 2 updates um, between now and us getting to Vietnam. So. Any any major news, we will we will let you know. We will get you as much footage as we can from Seawind. As I said, they are genuinely super busy trying to get this boat together, and the amount of detail that they have gone into to just just look at at things that I would never have thought about in a million years. And honestly, this is the reason that Richard Ward is such a clever man, and his team are so clever, is that they literally think of things that I've seen in no other boat. Yeah. Example number one, because we were talking about it this morning, in the heads, in one in the in the guest heads compartment, there is um, a washing machine and there's a washer dryer, but they have created um, a, a fiddle a fiddle that comes next to the washing machine so that obviously you can put you know it, you, you can store things but the fiddle folds down to become a shelf so you get a laundry shelf so you can do your look put your laundry on the shelf get access to the washing machine and if you do drop an item it doesn't drop down the back of the heads um so you, you literally have like a laundry you have like a bench with your laundry your washing machine yeah. like right in front of you so you can you know put your washing on the bench you can fold it all up there and you know this is stuff that in a home you take for granted like usually when you have a, a dedicated laundry in a house um, I mean, it's different in like British houses because you tend to have your washing machine in the kitchen, which is, I still find a bit weird, but. <laughs> Speak for yourself, woman. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, you tend to have like bench space and, and yeah, you actually, we're gonna have like bench space. We're yeah. gonna have like a proper laundry, which is crazy. Yeah, and other things like their, their work on storage solutions, the amount of storage yeah. options they've got, where they've managed to create storage, where they have managed to just build little, just, it's so clever. By the way, and I don't wanna harp on about these things that are like typically kind of, you know, 
what the the woman of the outfit kind of focuses on laundry and also walk-in wardrobe <laughs> right. Nick got more excited about the walk-in wardrobe than I did because I'm going to hide in it when I'm in trouble <laughs> so so there's a lot of little details that we're going to obviously bring to you but you know things like watertight engine compartments which is super important to us the amount of carbon fiber they are putting into yeah. this boat it is an insane amount of carbon fiber for strength and obviously uh, weight reduction so that that will be brought to you through the course of 2021 and obviously we'll ramp that up as we get nearer to our time in Vietnam when we're in Vietnam we will be videoing all the aspects of the build that we can we are going to hopefully bring you some 360 tours some like virtual reality kind of stuff that that is gonna you know technology uh, permitting but we've actually already invested in that equipment to kind of get you walk through tours of the boats that we are going to see whether it's our sea wind uh, 1370 ruby rose 2 or it's a boat we're just chartering so that's something we're going to be doing and then this time next year we should be just about on ruby rose 2 yeah i i think very much on ruby yeah. rose 2 so like we're honestly you know no pressure boom, no pressure <laughs> yeah but uh yeah come, come on get 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 get, 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 get laminating boys um so yeah that that's that's 2021 and then as we go on then the, then the fun really starts the sailing we have got big big plans to get some serious ocean mileage done um the final destination for sea, for Ruby Rose 2, whether or not we sail through the Pacific or we ship her for boat shows and sail her through the Atlantic, across the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, to be determined. Either option is pretty good for us. We will let you know as soon as we do. So honestly, um, I'm trying not to think too much about the back end of next year because it's a little bit too exciting and I do need to get a proper amount of sleep at night, not just lay in bed, <laughs> kind of dreaming of bits of fiberglass, which is a bit weird. Anyway, Teresa... You were dreaming of your walk-in wardrobe, admit it. I was dreaming of hiding in there again. Um, <laughs> now, anything else you want to add to these lovely people? Um, no, I just want to say, like, as always, thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. If you haven't already done so, then the button is down below. Thank you for your support. Thank you for following us. Thank you for all your comments and your messages and your emails. Um, I think that as we reflect back on particularly this past year which has been challenging for everyone um but just kind of in general i think nick and i are just full of like genuine gratitude that we have such a wonderful audience and that you guys are so amazing and lovely and we just wanted to um we've had like the most you know touching messages this year about how you, some of you are you know, literally just in isolation, have been in isolation for most of 2020, you know, have had to have lost at your jobs, have had to put your own dreams and plans on hold, perhaps indefinitely. And, you know, you kind of say to us, watching your videos is such a, a, an escape from reality and it's something that we're really grateful for. So, um, yeah, I think that it's just, I just wanted to say thank you so much for, you know, supporting us, whether it's by watching our videos every week or whatever. So yeah, I just want to say thanks. Yeah, I, and I echo exactly what Teresa said. Thank you so much. I really do hope that this year hasn't been um, too hard for you. And honestly, I promise you 2021 is going to be awesome. We hope to see you all on the water. Beers are always on us. And if you don't drink beer, then uh, Sparkling a, water's on us. A non-alcoholic drink of choice. <laughs> probably beer um so listen have a lovely lovely uh 2021 enjoy yourself send us the messages that you keep doing it keeps us going and honestly we love we absolutely love hearing from you enjoy your new year and we'll see you all real soon goodbye goodbye